from uh, the person who orders pizza, a uh, person who brings the flowers to the office, person who usually who always smell good, and um, also I'm a software developer at JetBrains. Um, how many of you have heard about, how many of you haven't heard about JetBrains? Uh, okay, so uh, JetBrain is a software vendor that provides uh, intelligent solutions for software developers. And as for me personally, I work uh, on RubyMine project, and it's an ID for Ruby and Ruby on Rails. Except Ruby and Rails, we do support many other technologies, but we are mostly focused on Ruby and Rails. And here's my topic for today. Uh, has anyone tried to build an ID, actually? <laughs> no. Enix is not an ID, it's a text editor. Um, wait, 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 wait. wait. <laughs> not so easy to support. And if we are talking about static languages, they are more or less easy to support if we are talking about text editing. Uh, considering dynamic languages, it's not so easy. And I will explain why. So um, we're mostly doing, in our projects, Java and Ruby. And we're constantly switching between Java and Ruby. We do Java to implement. Uh, some stuff in our ID, and we do Ruby because we need to know how Ruby works, actually. And uh, we are uh, currently developing some kind of mental disorder because it's really difficult to switch between these two languages. They are both object-oriented, but Java is static, Ruby is dynamic. And if any one of you uh, will ever decide to create your own ID using IntelliJ platform, uh, our experience uh, can be a good example of do's and don'ts. So, uh, IntelliJ platform is a platform, which is an open source platform, that helps to build language-aware IDEs. We provide virtual file system, a ready text editor, integration with version control, um, many other things. Well, a little bit of history. The first uh, public version of Ruby appeared at 90, in 1995. Our first release was in 2009, uh, a little bit later. Well, uh, but before this release, we spent almost three years trying to support Ruby on some satisfactory level. And it was really, really hard. Okay, so if you decide to create an ID. What you should think about. First, of course, it should be, it should have a good editor because the end user, the programmer, is working with text. The code is basically text. And because it's an ID, you need to provide some sweet things, such as, again, version control, uh, graphical debugger, you need to provide some facilities for management of the environment. But however, we still need a good editor to write a good code. What a good editor is? Um, the uh, peak of perfection is when you give it to a monkey. It won't be able to write something that can't be run at all. Uh, considering IntelliJ idea, I think we're quite close. We're really, really close. If the code can't be compiled, we highlight it anyway. Um, but again, Java is static, Ruby is dynamic. And why it's so difficult to support dynamic languages? <coughs> <laughs> well, the first reason 
most of them are open source and the community um, is developing really quickly and we need to support this and that and that and people who um, contribute to these repositories, they usually don't send messages to you like we changed this or that. Uh, we always <coughs> need to be up to date. And the second monster is dynamic Python. Now I will try to explain why it's so difficult to work with dynamic typing if you are trying to create a text editor. Just let, let's forget about debugging, version control, and stuff like that. Just uh, we're trying to give our text editor to a monkey. So we need to prevent errors. There are two types of errors, syntax error and everything else. Uh, for instance, uh, in Ruby, your code may not have any syntax errors, but it fails at one time. It's a really common situation. In Java, it just won't be compatible. Okay, syntax. Considering uh, syntax is more or less easy, all we need to do is implement vector and parser. In IntelliJ, we're using JSON operating vectors, and we're happy with that. It almost always works. And as for parser, we are doing it with our own hands. And if you are working with uh, a language which is not indent-based, like Python, for instance, uh, you can use our grammar case plugin, which is also open source. Well, as for vector, vector takes the uh, array of characters and converts it into tokens. Then goes parser. Parser takes these tokens and builds syntax tree. And you can handle the majority of syntax errors on this stage of your development. So syntax tree. Um, we do it in two steps. First, we just build a tree. <coughs> like method is inside the class, the class is inside the module, uh, the module is inside the file. Uh, PSI is at, uh, AST is for abstract syntax tree. PSI is for programming structure interface. Then, we inspect this tree. And after that, we create some elements which are called PSI elements. This is how uh, a regular syntax tree looks like. We know that we have file, we have uh, some statements inside this file, which is class, and then we go down and we need a method. Uh, you can build your syntax tree, it can be as, as detailed as you want it to be. Uh, the problem is, the more detailed it is, the more time it takes to build it. Like you need to analyze all these things. Okay. Oh, that's okay. And as for IntelliJ platform, if you want to uh, build a syntax tree, you need to implement parser definition, to implement interface on IntelliJ platform, and then you need to uh, declare all your PSI elements. Okay, errors. So syntax is done. And considering syntax really is an easy language, uh, we are we are thinking about working on Perl, but <laughs> we're still hesitating if if it's an option. Okay, everything else we need to know what's happening to handle the error. But the only problem, the error is about to happen at runtime. We are not runtime. We are a text editor. We don't run anything. So we need to analyze this text somehow and find the place where an error can appear. Uh, the uh, main question of uh, life, the universe, and everything sounds like what will be if I hit control space, if I hit auto complete? Like what follows the dot in this case? Or what parameters take the function, the method? But to know this uh, means to know the class, the type of a module. How 
now we know the size, the size checking is happening in the large pattern at 25. We, we can guess what we're going to need. First, we need to index our project and all the external libraries. Uh, in Intel J, two types of indexes are supported. First is file base that links file and its content. Again, you implement an interface and then you define how your index should work. It's just object to object relation and you create some kind of cache to access the information quickly. And uh, sub-base index, uh, it's about PSI trees. You can link a PSI element and its possible usages in the code. It all should be done when the project <coughs> is open. After we built our indexes, we need to create references. A reference is a link between PSI element to its usage. To implement a reference, you need, again, make your PSI element of your index tree, implement uh, the interface, which is called PSI reference in IntelliJ, and implement a method, which is called resolve how we can resolve this element. Here I can show you some examples. Okay, that's pretty simple, like in static languages. We have a class which is defined only once. We have a method here. After a dot, we go to the left, and then we can definitely say that if an object, when it has a size big, we go to up, the tree to the class, we find its method, the method, and then we can provide the auto completion. Well, Ruby has all these classes, and sometimes it's not so easy to find the declaration. If we can find the declaration, we can provide auto completion. If we can't, can't find the declaration, we cannot provide. So, uh, in this case, What's done? It's uh, here, <coughs> behind the scenes, exists an index, uh, a sub-base index, which uh, stores the information of the class declaration. And then we access this index and we take all these declarations and we go down this index tree and grab all the methods. the class is more or less fine, but uh, considering Ruby, it's not always possible to know the class. Well, it, um, this is uh, an alternative syntax for defining a class method. We can't do that. We just made a more sophisticated, more detailed inside tree to handle constructions, index constructions like this. If we do self, we are trying to to build a syntax tree, assuming that in this place we make a class method. Okay, reassignments. If you have a variable, it can be string. Then you can turn it into an integer, into some other object, in, into anything. In fact. What are you doing here? Here you can see it's not really long and difficult control flow. We just parse this control flow and we collect all the assignments. After that, we go to all the classes and then we collect all the methods from these classes. Uh, in this case, it's easy. Otherwise, you won't be able to see this code short piece of code, it's more visible. Um, but if we have if and within while and then goes else and when sophisticated control flow is met, sometimes it's not possible to 
compliance will be uh, available. What we need to do uh, in this case is uh, just show everything up to this code. Okay, class table. Um, we are tracking class evil almost all the time because class evil means that we modify class at one time. And it happens like this. And it's really important to know the class again, to know the class before runtime. Uh, the more indexes you build, uh, the more complex your tree in the explorer works. But however, considering class evil, it's being tracked all, all the time, almost all the time. And for um, constructions like this, because we can include and extend our class at one time, and we need to collect all the methods inside the module that were included. Instance evil, we usually we don't track instance evil, because it's not so, I would say, accordingly, our statistics is not so commonly used when we change an instance of an object at one time. But uh, the only problem we have here that in Ruby actually an instance can be an object. So uh, here it is. In this case, we just can't offer anything to our country. But what we can do is we can provide text-based search. If a user hits control space twice, we are trying to collect all the text appearance of any string that starts with uh, the substring. It's almost nothing, <coughs> but however it helps. What we can do, we can go back. We can grab this string and try to run through our indexes and try to find probably, maybe, there is a method which is called like this, and go there, navigate there. We can offer it as, as an option, or we can just directly navigate the user there. For well, considering method missing, there is nothing we can do about it, and here is an example why. There is no such a thing like say hello. It's defined when uh, an interpreter miss something that doesn't exist. Then it goes to method missing and executes the body. But what we can do here, if uh, in dynamic language, if a ghost method is called, we can navigate to method missing. And that helps. <coughs> so here's one more example. For instance, uh, we call a ghost method that doesn't exist. What we can do, we can index it as a call, and after that, we can, uh, if uh, we're trying to autocomplete a method for an object that was already met, we can suggest this variant. And we definitely can go back to the block call. Okay, we don't support const set construction. What is going on here? Uh, if you look carefully, uh, there is no interest type. It's just text-based autocompletion. Not even an option. Uh, Ruby allows not only add something to object, but also remove something from object. Like uh, all the uh, classes are inherited from for instance, basic objects, and what we can, uh, what a user can do, uh, he can just remove methods that are inherited from the prior class. It's not happening really often, so we don't do it. Okay, here's how. 
Good is a well-known and well-loved for its uh, for, for, for the itself, actually. Uh, active record is a DSL. Any other part of Rails is a DSL. And it's used for creating DSLs, actually. But DSLs is metaprogramming, as, as metaprogramming as it gets. And for us, it means that it's really hard to provide some satisfactory support for a DSL. What do we do in case of uh, DSLs? Well, we need hard code. What does it mean? It means that we um, <coughs> provide some basic usages that can't be possibly met at this place. And we do it with our own DSL. We have a, we had a DSL which was written in Ruby for supporting Ruby. We had it. We get rid of it. Um, I'll tell you why. So here we know that has many is expecting a model name after it. So we just collect all the models in the project. We take Rails and Fletcher just take this source code, apply naming convention, and provide the option to it. The same as going back. Okay, if you're trying to support a dynamic language, there are some useful tips where to find the info of the type that's about to be returned. Uh, if the code, for instance, if the code is well documented, you can find a return tag. So you know the uh, if the documentation is not correct, so you fail. Okay, this language supports annotations. That could be a great help. And again, naming conventions. Basically, all the uh, not all the Ruby frameworks, but many of Ruby frameworks are based on naming convention. When you define method missing, me method missing, sorry, uh, you are working with names. So naming if you know naming convention, you can place that to help to write uh, code without errors. And we can use runtime. What does it mean to use runtime? We can run it somewhere in background, fetch the type, and pass it to the ID. But this is really, really slow. We're a text editor. We're not about to run anything we're about to type something. And in some cases, it is important. We can use runtime, but usually we don't do that. Well, runtime, just a Ruby example how to define a type on runtime. But but it's really, really slow. And we had a, a Ruby, um, we used Java and JRuby, and we had a, a DSL, which was written in Ruby, and we, yeah, it sounds bizarre, but we, we wrote it in Java, our DSL. It was uh, hard and painful, but we did it because uh, we were thinking about performance, mostly. And so if we're talking, uh, sorry, I don't really feel the difference between these two words. Uh, if we're talking about dynamic language support, you will be always balancing between performance and code inside. The better code inside is, the slower it works. The faster it works, the code inside will suck. And again, consider an IntelliJ platform. Uh, if you like some language, really, and if you like to see more people using it. Uh, the best you can do, I think, is to not just to, to tell everyone that the language is cool. You need to provide some support for it, some helpful tools uh, to work with it. Because someone still uses, uh, I don't know, Notepad. There's nothing to be ashamed of, but it's not, it's not convenient. Well, so you can place the IntelliJ platform and try to support your favorite language. Okay, here's the future. 
email and where the slides are at the moment. If you have any questions, I would be more than happy to answer. After the success with, uh, with Google moving the Android ID to <laughs> base it on, uh, on top of uh, IntelliJ, do you know if, or can you say whether JetBrains is uh, trying to convince other 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 big players like uh, Springboard <laughs> or other companies that are currently building their their specialized ID on top of the to move to IntelliJ? Well. releases yet, but it's really, um, it's nice when you have a language and you provide language support for this language. This is, um, like you feel two birds, two birds with one stone. Yeah. But you don't, you don't know whether JetBrains is trying to convince other, other companies that currently invest in, in, in plugins for Eclipse, like, like <coughs> they were doing before, and it's not no longer doing? I think we're not trying to convince anyone. Uh, we have uh, many users all over the world, and we're not Eclipse. Uh, people should pay for licenses, considering uh, Ultimate Edition, but we have also Community Edition, which is free. So I'm a pay. I'm a paying. I have a WebStorm IntelliJ idea. So oh. I, I don't know. If I I like the move that Google made on to base the new Android ID on top of. It means that the platform is good. For me personally, it means that the platform is good. If Google uses it, it this could be a sign. But this is something, um, at the very beginning, we uh, started to develop an Android plugin for IntelliJ IDEA, and then it turned into Android Studio. Mm -hmm. Yes? I have a question. Uh, I've seen a documentation of Mind, I think, that you support don't use Yard uh, documentation. Uh, we provide some uh, basic support for it, like you can apply quick fix and generate uh, param and return tag. Um, our uh, last version, what, uh, all that we do uh, now, we're trying to make it faster because we support it many different languages, like uh, Ruby related languages. And uh, we did some code inside, and suddenly we realized that it's slow. After we got rid of JRuby, uh, I mean, now it's faster, and probably now we will be thinking about uh, patching this uh, documentation. Dynamic uh, usually it leads to to a holy war. Uh, 
uh, and it's like, I don't know, I would say it's like, like a life and the mistress, they are both good, but for different purposes. So. <laughs> Thank you. 